The time has come to do a campus legend in NCAA 07. Now, the character we're going to be using is Marcus Dupree. Now, if you don't know who Marcus Dupree is, he was Adrian Peterson before Adrian Peterson. He was like Herschel Walker in college. He was like Bo Jackson in college. This dude was a flat-out freak. He was a monster. He was one of those big, old-school, like Eddie George, Bo Jackson type of running backs. He's huge, 6'2", 225. You know, he was like a biscuit away from being overweight. He was like a McDouble away from, like, just blowing up and not being able to play no more. But this dude, when he was in shape, he was a flat-out monster. Now, he he went to the University of Oklahoma. A lot of you guys know this guy already if you've seen the 30 for 30 or if you're just much older than me and actually saw this guy play in real life. He was a flat-out beast from what I've seen. I believe in like a big ball game. I believe it was like the Fiesta Bowl down in Arizona. He rushed for like 240 yards, almost broke the record, and like had um on only 13 carries. So he was a flat-out beast. He was like a Hargrove or like a Chris Cooper. You know what I mean? He was like one of those guys. Um... But unlike those guys, there is no story of David Carter, you know, having issues with his coach. This guy actually had issues with the coaches and stuff like that. And to me, to kind of play devil's advocate, I can see both sides of, of, of the coin. I can see, you know, both sides of the story and stuff like that. Now, Barry Switzer, he was the head coach. Everybody loved Barry Switzer down in Oklahoma. He was like a legend. He was bigger than the program. You know what I mean? And then college football, that kind of, you know, it's kind of like that where the coach is more important than like anything else. The coach is more important than like a five-star recruit. The coach is more important than anything else, you know, especially back then in college football. But Marcus Dupree, from what I got from the documentary, it seemed like he was very sensitive. You know what I mean? Not, not sensitive where he would like cry himself to sleep, but just he didn't like people being critical of him. He didn't like criticism. He didn't like people breathing down his neck every five seconds about every little thing. Now, of course, in today's football if you have a meal ticket, if you have someone that's going to carry you to the promised land, you kind of just, you know, cater to whatever they want. Back then, it was a little bit different. So, the thing about Marcus Dupree is I guess it would look like he wasn't practice hard or like, like he wasn't practicing hard or, or he wouldn't try hard and stuff like that. And... I can understand where the coaches are coming from. You, you you want your players to try hard. You want your players to, you know, be all in, all out, you know what I mean, during practice and stuff like that. And it might not have just been in his blood to be that way. But on Saturdays, turn on the lights, you put him up against Texas or, or Nebraska back in the day in the old big, I believe it was Big 12, still Big 12. I want to say like Big 8 or something like that. But no, it's still like the Big 12. But anyways, he has runners with the coach. They end up... Losing the game to Texas and when they lost this game to Texas, he was like a Heisman hopeful He felt like he was gonna lose at the Heisman because they lost his game to Texas Cause back then You had to be like the best player on one of the best teams not just you know Like a Robert Griffin the third, you know type of situation where nobody expects Baylor to do anything And then you do just a little something something and then you win the Heisman No, you had to be on one of the best you, you, you had to be the best player on one of the best teams in the country to win the Heisman So he felt like he wasn't gonna do it. So he ends up going back to his hometown I believe it was in Mississippi um, he ends up going back to Mississippi, and he doesn't go back to Oklahoma. Now, he said in the documentary that was one of the biggest mistakes of his life, yada, yada. He wished that he could turn back the hands of time, go back, and maybe things would be different for him, right? Um, so, he was at Oklahoma, I believe, up until his sophomore season, and then he was going to play football. I believe it was for, like, Southern Miss. I might be wrong about that, but I believe it was, I believe it was for Southern Miss. But he decided not... To even do that he was with this agent who was like a family friend who was like a reverend and stuff like that and he basically just lied to him and um at the end of the, at, at the end of the day he basically like took heck of money for marcus dupree but before all that he got drafted into like the usfl and had like one of the richest contracts for like a rookie and like deservedly so he was a flip he was a flat out he was a flat out beast but before a game, he said that he felt like something bad was going to happen. And the bad thing happened was, or he felt like he was going to get injured, and he did. He blew out his knee, and that was basically the end of his career. And he started to get overweight and stuff like that. But then, you know, he, he got a trial for the Rams, so he started working out hard. And he actually, you know, played only a couple of games for the Rams. He, he averaged like 3.7 yards a carry. He only had one TD and like 230 yards, I believe, in his whole career. But at the end of the day, this dude was one of the best running backs. Like, like he was really in that same class as like a Herschel and a Bo Jackson at the time. He might, you know, hindsight's always 2020. Maybe not now. People don't, you know, think of him that way. But he was really that dude, especially for the Oklahoma Sooners. They lived and died by giving him the football. 
Now, I was not able to put him on Oklahoma because we did not do that well in the drills. As you can see in Oklahoma in this game was one of the better game was one of the better teams. You know what I mean? So we weren't able to do that, but we're on UCLA. I'm excited about being on UCLA. Um I really am, man. Um I'm not gonna give him his face mask. One, EA Sports doesn't have the have his face mask, but he did have the one with like the line going right down the middle. I'm not gonna give him that, but I believe he did rock the the elbow pad, the wristband, and maybe tape on his fingers if I remember that correctly. So it's a it's a modern day Marcus Dupree. Now I was gonna do like a Vince Young, maybe a Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow is actually in the game and he does have his real name, so maybe him and Marcus Dupree will be battling out for the Heisman. Um, I also have most of the people on Miami's names in the game. Um, but after I did that, and I, and I also did Cal, some Marshawn Lynch, and Deshaun Jackson, they all have their names and stuff like that. But I'm saying stuff like that a lot, and I apologize. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, everybody else did not have their names. So what I did was just have the computer come up with their names and stuff like that. And um, the surprising thing is that everybody who I already created still has their name, which is cool. So I'm actually, I might, if, I, if I'm able to, I might edit some players that are still in this game. Like I believe Brady Quinn is still in the game. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Jamarcus Russell, uh, Calvin Johnson is still in the game. So we're gonna try our best to get the players that I do know and do remember. Try to get them in the game. I believe Percy Harvin should be a freshman in this game. Adrian Peterson still in this game. So be kind of see what Marcus Dupree can do versus Adrian Peterson and Marshawn Lynch and stuff like that. Um, and if we do another campus legend, we might use a player like Vince Young, who I think should have won the Heisman. I know Reggie Bush had it, and Reggie Bush probably deserved it, but since Reggie Bush, you know, y'all know what happened to Reggie Bush. He decided to give the Heisman back. I think Vince Carter, no, Vince Carter, wow, Vince Young should get it. But that's basically going to wrap this one up. The first game of this series will be sometime in the new year. So, yeah, I'll see y'all then. Um, another thing, um, 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 we do have to do tests. We have to study and all that stuff. We have to do campus life. and it, 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 this, this game mode seems to be cool. But that's going to wrap this one up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, I enjoy bringing it to you. I hope that the rest of your day is the best of your day. And I'm going to see y'all later. Peace. Hi, sauce.